Welcome back to your physics teacher with me, Mr. Fernando. And last time I lied to you. I told you I was going to give you the equation of conservation of energy. Turns out there is no equation. So what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to show you that there is no equation by showing you there are many equations. So let's take a look at our assumptions that we're going to make quickly. So it's based on a previous video. So if you haven't watched that, please watch the previous video and it's going to make a lot more sense. So click. Okay, so if you're coming back, means you watched the previous video. And we're using the simulation here where we consider a theme park, and this is a U ramp. And we're gonna have a skater at multiple positions, and we're gonna consider the skater to be in an isolated system, and the ramp to be frictionless. When this is the case, and we set our potential to be zero at the lowest point, our mechanical energy, which is the total energy as well in this case, did not change. The only thing that was able to change is, if you notice, our potential energy at its maximum height is the highest, but the kinetic, assuming it starts from rest, will be at its lowest. But as the skater goes down the ramp, potential decreases and the kinetic increases. And as it goes to the bottom of the ramp, because of our coordinate system, our potential went down to zero, but our kinetic is at its maximum. All right, so at the bottom, you're gonna have kinetic energy at its maximum and potential to be at the lowest. And as the skater goes to the other side, the skater is slowing down. So as it slows down, kinetic decreases, but potential increases because the height is getting higher. And ultimately, once it reaches back the same height as before, we suspect potential to be at its greatest and kinetic to be at its lowest again. So in this case, it was zero because it started from rest. Now, let's look at the equations here that we try to come up with, right? Because our mechanical energy from initial conditions is equal to the mechanical energy at its final conditions. So we move the mechanical energy to the other side of the equation, and this just can be represented as final minus initial, which is a change in mechanical energy being zero. So this is technically the equation so far for the conservation of energy, but you're gonna see this has a lot of different cases. So let's try to take a look. Right, so I'm gonna consider at the maximum height, let's call that height H initial. And then let's consider at the very bottom of the ramp. Let's call this H2, because that's the frame that it corresponds to, right? Now, because the mechanical energy at frame zero equals to the mechanical energy at frame two, or the second position in other words, we can come up with an equation. Well, what kind of energy did it have at the very top? Because it started at rest, all the energy that it had was due to potential energy. And all the energy that it has at the bottom is due to kinetic energy. So here I'm using the subscripts zero to represent the initial and two to represent the velocity at this point. So this is our equation for conservation of energy. All the potential energy from the top equals to all the kinetic energy at the bottom. And that could be your first case. But you could consider other cases. Let's say you were interested in the mechanical energy from the initial position to the mechanical energy at time one. At time one, we can call this height H1. Oh, you know what? I made a little mistake, so I apologize. I, I should have taken this a bit further. I apologize. This, I should have simplified it into its equation form. MGH initial, for the initial height. Okay, now it's correct. 
Well, it was correct before, but I wanted to show you the full equation. So this equation you can use in problem solving and you can figure out whatever they're asking you for the height or the velocity, e either way. You're gonna see in other videos, okay? Now, let's go back to the previous, what I was talking to you about before. If instead you're interested in the mechanical energy initially, and because we're saying the mechanical energy is conserved, well, that's gonna to equal to the mechanical energy at time one, to E mech one. So now you need to play a new game. That's why you have to put in the skater at different positions because you wanna identify what amount of energy or what type of energy it has at each point. So initially, the only energy form that it has is due to potential energy. And at time one, notice that now it has two forms of energy. It has some kinetic and some potential. So again, we're gonna use one to represent a T1. So it has some potential energy and some kinetic energy. So we have a new equation to work with. Well, we can simplify this into the equation. So this would be MGH initial equals to MG h1 plus a half mv1 squared and notice how we got a completely different equation so that's what i meant there is no equation because it depends on which point you're considering the skater and also your coordinate system but from this equation itself depending on the question that they ask you you could be isolating for either one of the variables you don't know which one to solve the question so this is another scenario. Or you can even make it more exciting, like, well, what's to stop you from always choosing the initial conditions? You could start it from emec one because you know all the mechanical energy remains the same, so all the mechanical energy at one equals to all the mechanical energy at two. So this is how you can come up with many different equations. So you need to become really clever in how you're going to be doing problem solving, which I suggest you subscribe, and that way I'm going to show you how you can actually tackle the energy units. And please hit like, I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.